We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews and, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs and bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. And here we are, first time back in the studio. Well, that's Ooh, how excited I was. <laughs> Genuinely, it's lovely to be back and see your faces again. Mike, can't quite touch you. Ben, Good. please don't. The excitement is probably short lived. A few weeks ago, Mike was challenged to create a 100 layer lasagna. Oh, no. Barry, it's your turn for a mystery box. So it's from the same book that Mike cooked from. Signature dishes that matter. And these are a mix of like some really simple recipes, some very complicated ones. And a very fishy box. Oh, why thank you. Smoked haddock. Lots of double cream. Oh, milk. A lot of eggs. Chives. A selection of ingredients and the book has been bookmarked to the page you will require. Page 59. Okay. An omelette Arnold Bennett. This was created by a French chef back in 1929 for the English author Arnold Bennett. The description, this fluffy open omelette is topped with smoked haddock that has been cooked in milk and cream infused with bay leaves and nutmeg. The cooking liquid is used to make a bechamel, which is added to a hollandaise sauce and then cut with whipped cream. It's iconic. And to this day, it is still on the menu at the Savoy Hotel or the Savoy Grill. And it must be done with precision and excellence, not just a few eggs smashed up, cooked off and with some crumbled flaked smoked haddock on top. We would like you to prepare an omelette Arnold Bennett. As per that recipe, all the details are in the book. So I can't freestyle it. And we're going to give you 30 minutes to do it. That should be ample. Half an hour to make an omelette. Come on, give me a challenge. <laughs> well, in that case, your 30 minutes starts in three, two, one, omelette. So I've got to start off by making the Mornay sauce, which is infusing the haddock trimmings in the milk and then strain it. Just got to strain it. Oh, crap. Two minutes gone. Oh, crap. Do you think slapping some cold fish and some cold milk is going to infuse it the way you want? No, but it doesn't tell me to warm it up. Oh, what? Fine. Milk and haddock trimmings in a pan. I get time check. Oh, you've already had four minutes. No, I haven't. That's it, yes. You actually you, have. Exaggerating. You've done about a minute of cooking and about three minutes of reading. And actually, I don't hold that against you. Uh, because it's important to get it right. Cooking is a challenge when you haven't done it in a long time. So I've got my haddock in the milk warming up so it can infuse. Um, and then I'm moving on to my bechamel. I've got my butter melting down. It soon starts to bubble a little bit and I go in with my flour, mix that together, cook out the flour, then start adding in my milk and finish it with Swiss and Parmesan cheese. To recap, a Mornay sauce is basically a cheese sauce. It is a bechamel base, so roux, flour, butter, added milk, in this case the milk is infused with a few smoked haddock scraps, and then when it's cooked out, you add the cheese. Now, as we said, this is going to be a challenge, so you might want to, as you're making this, read ahead, because if you're doing one thing at a time, you're probably not going to have time. Uh, so what are we going to do next? Then? Doesn't tell me how to make a holidays. Oh no! You may have to do a cheats hollandaise, but your ingredients are there. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've got mind blank. Okay, hollandaise, 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 hollandaise. 20 minutes remaining. Can I look at a recipe? Uh, yes, it's in the AM menu book. Now opting to cook it on the bench. Well, it was too hot at the hob. Do you remember when five minutes ago I said you need to think ahead and do two things at once? Yep, not gonna happen, mate. Two things at once, turn the hob off, keep cooking this. <laughs> okay? Uh, hollandaise, 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 what recipe is that in? Okay, so you've got to make a reduction, of course you've got to make a reduction. With 20 minutes remaining, you might not have time for a classic reduction, you might just have to use the splash of vinegar. I don't have to add it, or do I? I was using another bowl, sorry, my mistake. Another bowl, just for this step. Peppercorns. This is the bit I don't really understand making a difference. It's like... Well, it adds flavour to a reduction. Faff, that's what it is. 200 grams of unsalted butter, sure. 
there was 50 in there, so. If a butter comes in blocks of 250 and you took 50 away earlier for your roux, how much do you reckon's left? Probably about that much. Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm, my heart is pounding. Okay, so two egg yolks. Oh, another <laughs> <bowl>. <laughs> See? And you're back in your comfort zone. You're just making a mayonnaise, but without oil, you're subbing it in for clarified butter. That's literally the two mother sauces. Hollandaise mayonnaise. I'm out of my depth. Like, I haven't even got to making the omelette bit yet. Just an omelette. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Just an omelette. One of London's finest restaurants, the Wolseley, has been serving their version of omelette Arnold Bennett since 2005. The head chef, Mr. David Stevens, has said that it's a dish that you'll, quote, need to make several times before you get it oh, right. Oh, great. Great. But it's all right, it's just an omelette. Cheese. You got that, and then the same of your Swiss cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really fluffy. But he's adapted. He's taken it to the board. He's going to cut it instead. Smart. My butter has clarified. My eggs are separated. My vinegar reduction is not a thing. It's just soaking. Um, my cheese is going into my cheese sauce. Mornay. Mornay. And I think once all that's in there, I can then start thinking about the omelette. How long left? Uh, you're about halfway. I kind of don't want to help you, but I kind of want to help you make it plausible. You might want to preheat an oven, a grill. A grill? Don't leave that till the last two minutes when you're panicking mm -hmm. and going, the grill's cold. Grill? Just, I mean... That's grill? Why a grill? Grilled? Number one rule, oh, read man. ahead where you can. So that you can do things like preheat a grill. Halfway! Oh. Right. I'm just panicking. Right. Hollandaise. Hot, hot water. Steam. Kind of half cook it, but not too much so it makes scrambled eggs. Sure, that's good. That'll do. Get it over a hob. I hate to say this, Baz, because I know I don't feel like you need reminding to leave a hob on, but you might want to switch a hob on to start preheating your omelette pan. This one. This one. I'm so confused. Why, what's... You're going to make an omelette and then you're going to transfer it into the serving you dish. That's so stupid. So you can put it under the grill. Oh. He's acknowledged it, but he's still not done it. Vinegar going now? I forget. That is going to season it. Flavour. Um, I know that you've got to basically whip these eggs to a point where they start to thicken very slightly to make a little figure of eight. You drizzle it, it's, not, it's pretty much there. And I've got a dribbling clarified butter, which is the clear butter on top of the scummy bit. Now he's rocking. Over the pan of steaming water, you don't want to let the eggs get too hot, but you want the warmth to stop the butter from cooling. But you can always take it off the heat once you're happy that it's cooked. Oh my goodness, it's working! Slowly dribble in as you whisk, clarified butter. That's done. Right, cool. So now I need to poach my haddock so it starts to flake apart beautifully. So I've got some milk on the hob that is on. I'm going to be honest with you. It's been a long time since I've cooked on camera. Because usually like, the chaos happens in my own kitchen, no one's watching, it's fine if I flap. Now, I'm starting to feel a little bit silly, because I can't turn the scales on! He's never worried about flapping in the studio before. I'm a four, I'm a four egg omelette man. I mean, is this the time to go off piste? With, with six minutes remaining? It'll be fine, fine. So I've got to whisk these up. I need to add some double cream, some salt and some pepper, I think. And then I've got to fry it off in that pan. That's a smoking hot pan. Probably too hot now. Probably too hot now, he says. And then doesn't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, right, cream. How much cream? Sure. Salt, salt, salt. Butter. Sure. Five grams. Sure. That's hot, isn't it? You've got a wonderful non-stick pan, so once you're happy with it, it should just slide out into your copper pan, at which point you're going to add the glaze on top. What's your glaze? Glaze? What is the glaze? Was the glaze? Which one was the glaze? I can't do more than one thing at a time. Okay. Does that make sense? What in another bowl? Oh, in another bowl. Why not? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I was just making an omelette. So all of those wonderful things you've just made—the hollandaise, the mornay—now need combining in the right ratios with a little bit of whipped cream to, to, to cut through it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ben. This is just this is messy for me. I mean, don't be sorry to me. You're clearing it up. James oh. 
Yeah, this is a lot of cheese again, isn't it? Whisk that together and that's your glaze. How's your omelette doing? It's done. Three minutes left. Oh, nicely done, Baz. Haddock. Hi. Hot, hot fish. Hot fish, use a spoon. No, no time. Going on. I'm going to use a bowl. Nasty hell. What am I making? Under the grill to gratinate and then you finish it with chives to garnish. It's served in the copper pan. That is outrageously good. Understandable that sometimes when you're rushed, you forget about the finer details. You've not seasoned a huge amount. Last minute. Chop some chives. <laughs> He's eating smoked haddock. I'm pretty sure that's how all the chefs do it in the Savoy Hotel while they're waiting for it to gratinate. Oh my God, that's shredded work. Right, pick out the good ones. Has that gratinated? Mmm. Yeah, it has. And it's puffed up, which I wasn't expecting. So rather than folding it over and serving it sort of in those thirds and that wonderful sort of pillow-like effect that we recognise in a traditional French omelette, this open style allows for a greater surface area of glaze. You have the last 20 seconds if you need them. Gratinated. Whoa, that is gratinated. I mean, that's wonderful. Five, four, three, and now you're just showing off. Two. Am I tidy up? One. <laughs> Stop. That was... Outrageous. Now I've done it, it all now <laughs> makes perfect sense. Uh, that is the most stressful and the hardest I've ever worked to make an omelette. Flapping aside, I think he's done it. That was a slightly stressy 30 minutes, but it looks good. I'm really proud of this. Um, it's unlike any omelette I've ever had. Um, but I'm fascinated to see what it tastes like. The time limit was perhaps a little tight and increased a little bit of stress, but we want to kind of replicate the, the professional kitchen, otherwise you tend to flap too much. Dig in, have a taste. This is one of my favourites, and if I ever see it on a menu, I nearly always go for it as an omelette option. I've nailed it. And just, just from, just already, straight away, look at it. It's light and fluffy. It's almost souffle-like. Flaky fish, and you should get the richness, for sure. The tang and the saltiness from the parmesan. Serves one! <laughs> and the Swiss cheese. A little bit of light smoke from the haddock. It's undeniably delicious. Whether or not I've nailed the technique or not, I'm not sure. But for my standards, that's exceptional. This is the perfect example of French cooking. Like, this is why it's so famous. Simple, really simple, rich ingredients, but just a lot of technique. I think maybe the omelette pan was a fraction too hot. I think you probably got some crispy bits around the edge. But actually, that looks pretty light and fluffy. It's definitely creamy. The consistency of your fish and the fact that you've got that gratination is excellent. And it is rich, but I can guarantee you'll eat it all because it is light. It is indulgent. But look, we chose this because it is packed full of skills, from poaching fish, to making hollandaise, to making a, a roux and then a bechamel and turning it into a mornay, plus the omelette. It's got a whole bunch of skills in there. And yet, it's a classic dish that everyone should try when they come to the UK. That gives you a slight taste of what it's like to work in the Savoy. And it ain't easy, but worth it if you manage to pull it off. Not a bad effort at all for the first time cooking back in the studio. How do you think Barry got on? And comment down below if you'd like to see us give more iconic dishes a go. You know what, I was wrong. It's not just an omelette. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. One, two, three, four, five, five bowls. One, two, three, four, five, six pans. Six bowls, six pans.